Uh, moving on, just a question on um, Judilist trials. Um, do you have any concerns that such a shake-up of the jury system for sexual offences would be brought in by secondary legislation. I've got a concern it's getting brought in by secondary legislation rather than being on the face of the bill. I was just wondering whether you had any comments on that one. I don't think we would no, dispute can't. that at all. I mean, no. I think that I mean we heard from in the earlier session about the concerns that we, the scrutiny that we believe is required, and, and a lot of our concerns. I mean. We didn't mention this when we were talking about the creation of the Sexual Offences Court, but so much, you know, and, and that's also true in jury list trials, that we don't know. And, and it is difficult then for us to, to comment on how we think that will work if we don't know. I mean, you know, taking the jury list trials, I mean, it talks of a time-limited, well, that was what the proposal was from the working group, of a time-limited trial. We don't even know what the time limit is far less, and we you covered already this morning with the previous witnesses about measurement and how that can be measured. And I think it is fair to say, picking up on something Professor Thomas said, Professor Thomas was speaking about the very big number of changes that this bill, and, and perhaps that's maybe what I mean when I talk about tinkering and piecemeal, these are huge changes in various aspects of the criminal justice sector. And how are we going to design a measure to assess what has made a difference when we're all introducing all of these together? And, as I've already said, so many of changes are still very much bedding in, in our view. I, I think that's, there's a big challenge there uh, as to how you could measure that. So the point you make about secondary legislation and all these questions that are still out there, yes, they are concerned. Would anybody else want to comment on that? No? Mr. You won't hear. I can't think of anything which has caused greater disquiet within the profession than the question of moving towards juryless trials in rape cases. And so, whatever, you know, Parliament will take whatever steps it, it, it decides are necessary, but they need to be absolutely well thought out because a, a misstep on that front where emotions run so high would be a disaster. We have a practical situation just now, and I know that you are concerned with delivering change rather than talking about change or whatever. You want to deliver it. We have a situation just now where people in my situation earn a lot of money, I think. I'm not a premiership footballer, but I earn a lot of money. People still don't want to do my job. People are fleeing my job, despite the fact that my job is, from my perspective, a very rewarding job. People are fleeing it. So if you... If Parliament decides to implement something that is so widely unpopular, there's bound to be a practical consequence of that. It's a struggle just now to, to resource the courts that are currently sitting. And you saw there was an article in the paper about, I think again, Livingston Sheriff Court. I don't know if Livingston's cursed, because I think the 2020 case came from Livingston too, where a trial just had to be adjourned because there's no one to do it. And, but that's now, that's an actual reality. So it's not that no one wants to do it. There's literally nobody. It's not a question of my first choice can't do it. There's nobody to do it. And so as people are driven out of the profession, I, I talk about an outflux in my submissions. Um, that's a reality. So you've got to be super careful with massive changes that what you don't do is, with the best intentions, deliver chaos and delay and disaster through people just not wanting to do the job, unless you're going to conscript people to do my job. You need to be realistic. And I know that that's, you want to deliver change, but you need to think about it holistically, I think. I mean, you know that. I say that as if that hadn't occurred to you. I know that it has. I'm just providing some emphasis, please. I think what's just been said does sort of come back to what we were talking about, about the different skill set that might be required between presenting in a jury case and presenting before a single judge. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I'm an independent person. I'm not representing the faculty, and um, I'm here just to give the benefit of my experience. But um, the, the, you, you have to recognise that the concern of the profession, which has been expressed quite vociferously, is, I, I think, um, perhaps as a result of, the fa of fear of change, in relation to the way in which uh, they conduct their work. And that's a change that will be brought about um, quite quickly. Now, the, the proposal in the bill 
is for a pilot, for all, all it's described as a pilot, and I think the concern is, is it a pilot or is it just a, a revolution, as it were? And, and that's, that's, that's a legitimate concern that people have. Now, for my part, I think it's something that we should do. I think we should have some form of a genuine pilot uh, to, uh, to have um, uh, a non-jury uh, uh, way of trying cases, certain types of cases, for a period of time. That's something that's worth looking at. Um, but, but you have to, at the same time, recognise that that will, re that will require the profession to adapt to that situation, not, not just the practitioners, but also the judges themselves. So the question you asked was, should this be done by Act of Parliament or secondary legislation? And I think the, the clever answer that was given in the last session is that's a matter for, for you <laughs> 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 to decide. Um,